Hey Lacey, what do you say we head out to Captain Cook for a farm tour? This is the Kona Historical Society Kona Coffee Living History Farm Tour. And this specific farm tour really gives us a deep look into the history of Kona Coffee. This home is frozen in time, intentionally. Its structure remains just as it was in the early 1900s. Daisaku and Shima Uchida came to Kona as immigrants, seeking a better way of life as coffee farmers. In the 1920s, this became their home, and it remained in the family for the next three generations. Today, this is known as the Kona Coffee Living History Farm, a registered National Historic Site meant to take you inside the lives of the early coffee pioneers, back when life was difficult yet rewarding. You know, they say, oh, you folks have a hard time, but we don't know because everybody was equal. You go to work, you go to the same school, you bring the same kind of lunch, there was no cafeteria. Well, when you compare today and that time, yeah, was hard life. But at that time, we didn't know any better, so we thought, oh, this is the way of life, you know, so I accept it. Mikio and Linda are two of the many docents eager to tell their story. Everything is low to the ground, just like in Japan. Uh, they would sit on these type of cushions. These are called zabuton. They would sit like this. Uh, and if you notice, the outside of the cushion has some more of those rice bags. Rice came in large cloth sacks, and that sack became the all-purpose family fabric. Now this is uh, another garment made out of rice bag here, but this is actually a raincoat. If you notice, these are just pants, but in, inside, you see how they have these little... Rice bags also helped absorb the heat from the hot tin roofs. Education was a priority. This typewriter cost a year's wages. This is where the kids did their uh, Japanese studies. Uh, they were doing shuji, which is calligraphy. These are kids' dolls, glass bottles decorated with imagination. Heat came from burning coffee tree branches. The fire for the stove is being lit, and the excess smoke is vented through the roof. Rice and vegetables are on the menu. Now every morning, Mrs. Uchida had to make a lot of rice. She made the rice for the family's breakfast and the family's lunch. We wash the rice and vegetables, retain everything, and we actually use that to water the garden later. So we did not throw anything away, of course not the water. And later when I start to prepare the vegetables, I'll save all the food scraps here, and I'll actually feed the chickens. Relaxation consisted of a cup of sake and reading the local paper while puffing on a Bull Durham cigarette. The tobacco bag was then used at the kitchen faucet to catch any plumbing debris. Bathing was done in a wooden bathtub. Laundry was scrubbed by hand, and the restroom was a two-seater. Rainwater was collected from their rooftop and stored in this wooden tank. This is a tofu maker. Soybeans were placed in the hole and crushed by the weight of a rock. Outside was a fully operational coffee processing farm. The picked beans were put in a pulping machine, left to soak overnight, and placed on this outdoor drying platform. The beans remained on the floor, while the roof could open or close depending on the weather. When picking coffee on tall trees, ladders were equipped with a swivel eye bolt. This allowed its legs to safely sit on rocky terrain. And once you set them, it will set solid like this. When picking coffee, the adults had large woven baskets, while the kids had little tin cans. See, this can is for little children. And you have to fill this in a little bigger. And some farmers are generous. They should give you maybe a nickel or dime for a full can. Some were very strict. If you don't make two by lunch, you're not going to have lunch with us. You know, and they used to say, that's a good way to train children. But today they call it child abuse. You know what I mean? <laughs> However, coffee, although fruitful, did not bring in enough money to support a family year-round. 
Fortunately, the local merchants were there to help. You know, those days, the uh, merchants were generous. They still supply your food throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Throughout the year. You don't pay monthly. You pay with the coffee. Without the merchants being so generous, I don't think a lot of people would have stuck to farming because they have no source of income. The focus of this collection is to remain historically accurate and authentic. It's a look back into the early days of a life of a coffee farmer, presented by the Kona Historical Society.